starts well. I was meditating on his word and just how amazing his word is when we read it and meditate on it. Not just silently, but as a declaration, specifically the Psalms. And when we read it out loud to him and not just what it does in us. To read his word back to him as a prayer or declaration is indeed to pray his perfect will. But this does something in us. The word then comforts us, lifts us up and takes our face or our focus from our circumstances to him. It builds us up literally from the inside. There is actually a physical change that happens to us when we speak out the word of God in faith. His word is eternal and it is life-giving. It is spirit-breathed. And This is as Genesis 1, when the earth was in darkness and the Lord spoke over the waters and it brought both light and life. David says, the entrance of thy word gives light and understanding to the simple. We are made of 70% water. And when we speak his word out aloud, it changes our composition on the inside. Scientific studies have proven this. His word is life. People that invest their time and soak in the word of God are people that experience life in them. This is the living waters that Yeshua spoke about at the well in John 4. It is the spirit that makes the words living and the word of God is likened unto water in scripture. Indeed, it is the well that we drink from. There is revelation that he gives us from above, the rain that comes from the heavens, from his throne. Think of the mercy seat above the earth that is upon the ark of the covenant. Inside the ark is Aaron's rod, the manna, and the two tablets of stone. They represent authority of the word, the meat of the word, and the commandments. Revelation flows from the throne down unto us. And so when we hear him saying that he will give us rain or rivers in the desert, we can know that this does not only mean physical rain or blessings, but also revelation from the Holy of Holies. And this is different to the revelation we receive from within the inner court, as well as the revelation in the outer court. It is the spirit that lifts the veil of our understanding and within the tabernacle, there is a veil that separates the different parts. These veils have different meanings, but in context of the word, it speaks of greater revelation with each progression within the tabernacle. This is the living water poured into the well of our heart. However, we have a responsibility to also pour water into the well. Yeshua told us in John 14 that the comforter that he will send will remind us of all things he has said. This is not only reminding us of what he told us personally, but also the very scripture that we have filled ourselves with. He draws from this wealth in order to remind us in all circumstances of what the word says. Proverbs 10, 11 says that the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. Therefore, our mouths must speak the word of God. This is different to the name it and claim it prosperity delusion. Their focus is on a formula, although they call it faith. The word of God generates faith in us. And when we speak it out loud, our ears hear. This is why the word says that the faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not to get what you want. No, this is about your circumstances that may leave you hopeless or in deep sorrow. Our faith is being tested in these times. And when we take up his word and speak it back to him, lifting him up who is the word, it generates faith in us for our circumstances. And we often depend on faith, but he wants us to depend on his word because it will never return void. We are to have faith in him who is the word. The word says that we speak out of the abundance of the heart. The question then is, what is the abundance of your heart? How much of the word is in your heart and how much of it remains in the pages of your Bible? To write it upon your heart is to etch it in or inscribe it. 
doesn't matter what your circumstances you may find yourself in, it cannot make the word that is in your heart void. That word in your circumstance, when you draw it from the well of your heart, will never return void. So yes, he gives us revelation from the mountain, from the heavens, but we too have to put water in the well. Not just for ourselves, but also for those who speak to us. We meet someone and do not have a Bible with us. It is then that the Spirit will speak out of the well of your heart. How full is your well? Are there only a few drops at the bottom? Is it half full or is it running over and overflowing? His desire is that we would speak from that abundance. That there would be living water that gushes out of our mouth when we speak to others to bring them life. That takes effort. That takes time. And it takes commitment to memorize the word of God. So I want to encourage you to memorize scripture. If you are unable to do long chapters, start with a small chapter. Or start with a particular verse that speaks to your present circumstances so that it may be relevant and feed you. Start with verses that have meant a lot to you that will be easy for you to remember. Memorize where it is written so that you can tell others where it is written. You're not just making it up. Allow the Spirit to inscribe the Word of God on your heart. It is then that you become like a tree planted firmly by the living waters as Psalm 1 says. You are blessed when you meditate on the word day and night. Right through the day, you steal opportunities to memorize the scripture so that it becomes established. In the night season, the spirit comes and draws from that well the words that you have placed in there in obedience and in love. He then starts to expand and minister to you about these words. Just this morning I was woken up while speaking in tongues in my sleep. This living water, which is the Spirit making the Word of God alive in us, ministered to us in the night season. We work with the Spirit to fill the well of our heart with the living water. It washes us, it prepares us, and it builds us up and sustains us. Now this was at three o'clock in the morning. He then started opening the word and giving me revelation for the next two hours. It was out of the abundance that I spoke in tongues and this abundance brought more revelation. Remember, we are the tabernacle of God and his mercy seat is the throne of your heart. Out of the abundance, the spirit speaks and brings revelation from heaven. It is heavenly rain, living water. Deuteronomy 11 verse 18 to 20 says, Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thy house, And when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates. The frontlets between your eyes represent renewing our minds. Right through the day, the word of God is resonating in your spirit. And we are the spiritual house of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit, and every temple have gates and doors. Our gates are our eyes, ears, and our mouth. These are the gates where the word of God must go in and out. It is at these gates where wisdom stands and call all those who pass by to come in and dine at the table she has prepared. The word of God produces wisdom in us and allow us to stand at the gates to contend with our enemies and call out to others. We need to memorize the word of God. During the tribulation, the Bible will be manipulated even more or not even available. And it is in that time where the pure word of God needs to not only reside in us, but be as a seed that has grown in maturity as a tree to bring forth more fruit. And every time you memorize a 
scripture, it is being planted in the soil of your heart. Each time you memorize that seed, you are watering that plant and it starts to grow. Word of God grows in us. Please read the whole chapter of Deuteronomy 11. Note, Deuteronomy is just before the book of Joshua. And the book of Joshua speaks of Canaan. I explained to you that the sanctification process is represented by the wilderness, the inner court. And we go through the Jordan to Canaan that represents the Holy of Holies. The land of milk and honey. His desire is to bring us into the Holy of Holies and have our being in there, never to leave. And he is saying, when my word, which I bring to you, whether through revelation or written upon your heart, when you meditate upon it day and night, I will make a way for you through the Jordan. As this word starts sacrificing you, the sword of the spirit cutting through bone and marrow, separating soul and spirit and discerning the true intents of your heart, as you allow my word to have full play in you, you will be able to walk through the Jordan and come to the other side and enjoy the feast that I've prepared for you at the mercy seat, to drink of my milk, to eat of my honey and to possess the land. Remember, it was the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant the word of God that stood in the Jordan so that others could pass through. Memorizing scripture is more than just being able to parrot it, but it is a means by which the word grows in us as a mighty tree. Isaiah 55 verse 1 and 3 says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that have no money, come ye. Buy and eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and you labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. That's the oil. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Year and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Amen.